Hey everybody, today your auto runs through Heaven and Ale, which is a game where players run ancient monasteries striving to provide the people with the Heaven's Best Ale. And I'm going to show you how it works today in a two-player run through, although before I get going, I strongly recommend you turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel, so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. Okay, have you done so? Then welcome to the monastery. This is the main central board where players are on their turn going to be moving clockwise around the board to grab all the different essential ingredients we need to make ale. Uh, the, the board is seated every round randomly and in a two-player game we're going to play over three rounds. A four-player game goes for a whole six rounds I believe and so I've already put out a bunch of stuff. Here's some water, here's some wood we need, here's some yeast and some hops and some barley. A little bit of something and then there's some more lumber. A lot of lumber came out in this first round. Uh, heck in the second round depending on how it comes out there might not be any lumber so we might want to make a run for lumber or the yeast or whatever. There's also four every round four monks come out that we can recruit into our monastery and there are also these purple discs that represent our opportunity to harvest all of the resources that we are trying to tend. And then finally, as part of setup, there are 12 objectives. It's going to be the same 12 every time you play. And the first player to complete a given objective scores four points. The second player to do it could score two points, and then pass that, oh, well, it's too late, you can't, um, you, nobody cares about the third player to, to complete an objective. Right, so this is the central board, but each player has their own monastery board as well. Here's mine. And uh, this is all the area that I can plant all these resources that I'm finding, um, you know, in the main monastery, uh, in all these different spots. I can plant them on the sunny side or the shady side. The sunny side is the where I get the best resources that I use for my ale. The shady side is where I get not such good resources and I end up selling it for money. Because, oh man, money gets tight, tight, tight in this game. To grab almost any of these tiles, we need cash and we're going to burn through it really fast. Now, at the beginning, my master brewer is sitting here all the way at the bottom of this track. And I don't really have much in the way of barley or water or um, hops or yeast. And I've got one lumber and that's it. So over the course of the game, as I harvest more and more of the stuff, all of these things things are going to work their way up the track and by the end of the game I want them to be as high up the track as possible because the more resources I have and the more mastery my master brewer has accrued on this track by the end of the game the more points I'll score for my heavenly ale. Right. So, uh, this is mine. Jen's got a set up exactly the same. Plus, each of us starts with 25 uh, bucks, or ducats, I think they're called. Uh, you know, very, very super thick money cards. So, each start with 25 money um, and almost no resources, and we're ready to go. Now, I'm going to be the first player, which means I'm sitting right here. That means Jen, as the second player, can choose to have a bonus of moving her Master Brewer up one, getting two more uh, Ducats, or moving up one of her resources by two steps. And remember, this is a game where we're trying to move up as fast as possible. So does Jen want to get some free resources, uh, better Master Brewer, or some more money? I think she just wants more cash. So in addition to her starting 25, she's got two more. So she's starting with 27 because uh, you need your cash pretty bad in this game. All right. So we're set up, ready to go. I am the first player, which means I'm first out of the gate. And I can now, I can move forward clockwise as far as I want. I could jump all the way around, you know, and to grab this if this were something I really want pretty desperately. Although that would be insane because once I've gone clockwise, I can't go back. That would mean for the rest of the round, I've only got a few more spaces I could go and I'd leave the rest of the board to Jen. So there's a tricky thing. If there's something I want really bad, I might make a really big jump to get it. But early in the game, when I don't really have anything, I think I'm going to make a small jump and not give Jen leave too much of the stuff on the table for Jen. So you know what? I'm just going to jump one because, hey, here's a big, fat, juicy level five water tile. So I'm going to go on ahead and do this. Now, to be able to take this tile, it is either going to cost me five or ten bucks, depending on whether I put it on the sunny side of my board or the shady side of my board. Uh, basically, the sunny side represents that I'm trying to get really high quality stuff. The shady side is low quality stuff. So it costs twice as much over here. And remember, I start with 25 bucks. Um, geez, what do I want to do? Um, I think 
early on, while it would be great to be able to activate this and increase my water by five, one, two, three, four, five. And then if I only increase it two more, I'll actually be on the track and I'll actually have some water. I, I mean, because my water is way low. I got to get it up quite a ways before I can start actually having water to score at the end of the game. So putting it over in the sunny side means that when I harvest this, my water meter will go up five uh, because I keep the high quality water for my own brew. If I put it over here in the shady side, that means when I harvest it, um, I will sell the water I get. And instead of getting five water over here, I get five more money so that I'll have more money to buy more stuff. I think I'm going to go on ahead and put it over here. And I'm going to put it right here between these two spaces because that means um, eventually when this gets completely surrounded, I'll build a shed here. And I have the, once I build a shed here, I have the opportunity to harvest some of these tiles. And because I'm putting this here, when I put a shed here, I'll get to harvest it. And when I put a shed here, I'll potentially get to harvest it as well. So I'll potentially get two uses. I mean, I could do the same thing over here by um, getting it off of... You know what, actually, yeah, I think I'll put it over here instead. This is a high value thing. It's expensive. It's going to cost me five of my starting 25 bucks. All right. So that was my turn. It is now Jen's turn. She cannot come. You, she actually can go to the same space as me, but only if there would be something for her to grab. Since it's empty, she can't go there. So she's got to jump on ahead and try to go for something else. And what does she want to go for? Well, one of the things that's going to help her decide is which of these objectives is she going to try to chase after? Um, because, like, well, it's interesting. Jen could probably guess I'm going for this objective. This is as soon as somebody has six level four five tiles. And I just paid a lot of money to get a level five tile. As soon as somebody does that, they'd be able to snag this four pointer. So um, Jen's got to decide, well, hey, does she want to race me on that? Or does she want to seed that to me? Because Jen, she could jump all the way up here and grab the next tile that's worth five. Um, so that we could be competing to be the first to complete this. Um, but hey, you know what? Right next to it, there's a competition for being the first player to have six level one tiles, which are nice and cheap. Although interestingly, the first level one tile is all the way over here, this, this lumber, the single lumber. There's no way Jen's going to want to jump all the way over here to grab this. But she might, as she gets closer and closer, she might want to make a big jump to grab this um, so that she could make an early bid for trying to complete that particular objective. Hmm. Um, I think for now, she'll just take it slow. She'll just jump to the next one and grab, eh, well, see, the double lumber, there is no victory points to be had for having a bunch of twos. Having a bunch of fives, having a bunch of ones, those are really great. But there's lots of other ways to uh, score these objectives as well. This one is for getting any one of your resources um, all the way around the board to get to 20. As soon as somebody gets like their lumber to 20 or their hops to 20 or whatever, they would complete this. So actually, I mean, um, if you're really pushing for fives of a particular type, you have, you know, particularly lumber, um, you have a better shot of making all the way around. You know what? Um, yeah. You know, what? I think, yeah, Jen, she will jump here, even though it's only two, she'll take it anyway. Um, because she's going to start trying to push her lumber up hard and fast. Um, because if she can get her lumber all the way around to where she's got 20, that'll be really great. For the rest of the game, if she ever harvests more lumber after that, she'll just start making money directly. Plus, as soon as she gets her lumber up here, or anything all the way there, she could get that particular objective. Now, interestingly, this particular objective is get all five types of resources onto the track anywhere. So, I mean, the lumber is already on there. So by Jen pushing lumber, she's not necessarily pushing for this objective very well. This objective is get your master brewer all the way up onto the actual scoring track because these tokens right here, they're not worth anything right now until they get pushed all the way up here. But Jen's going to go for lumber anyway, so she's going to take this. Now, remember, this costs either two or four, depending on whether she puts it on the sunny or the shady side. I think Jen is going to go on ahead and put it on the sunny side of the street. So it's going to cost her four. Uh, here's her starting five, and she gets one in change. All right, so that means when she activates this, and she's got potentially multiple opportunities to activate this off of both of these sheds and also by activating this harvest space over here. I mean, this thing could generate um, six lumber for her over the course of the game. I mean, heck, maybe even eight. 
uh, maybe even 10 lumber, uh, the more times she activates this, uh, which would get her all the way up here, which would get her half of the way towards her goal. So she's going to put that in a spot. It cost her twice as much, and that was her turn. It's over. Now it is my turn again. Now this is not one of those games where if Jen had jumped way up here, I could then do multiple turns going bop, bop, bop. Uh, players always, it's uh, go round robin. If I jump all the way over here, then Jen will go, and then I'll go again, and then Jen will go. But anyway, so where am I going to jump next? Well, I can't jump there. I could be the first to pay four or eight to get this monk and put him on the shady or the sunny side so that he will help me harvest my resources. <clears throat> Plus, uh, there's an objective over here. The first player to act to get all four types of monks, there's four different ones. You can see they've got little different faces and different back colors. The first player to get one of each of the four monks and activate all four of them could score this bonus. So I can see, hey, here's this guy and this guy and this guy. Three of the four monk types are out. If, so maybe I want to start collecting monks and try to get all four of them so I could start chasing after that particular bonus. Um, but by the same token, I could be chasing after this, which is trying to get each of the five ingredients and harvest them all so that I could score this four points for being the first four player. Um, or this is, I mean, I've already started filling up my shady side. The first player to fill all 15 spaces on the shady side can get this. This is for the sunny side. These are for completely surrounding these things so you can build sheds. The first player to, um, to build three equal sheds or four different sheds could score those things. And let's see. Right, what am I going to do? <laughs> with my board. Do I want to grab that monk? Do I want to start chasing after monks? He's eight bucks. That's pretty expensive. But I did set up... You know what? I'm, I'm going to keep pushing it. I, I want to make sure I'm the first to do this. I'm going to jump. I'm going to skip him. I'm going to skip this opportunity to harvest stuff based on its numerical value. I'm going to skip the this level two, um, what do you call it? the uh, yeast, and I'm going to jump right over here to this level five. I'm continuing to try to collect these crazy expensive things, because remember, once I've got six of them, I'll score that one. Right. So now, this is either, again, going to cost me five or ten, depending on whether I put it on the sunny or the shady side. I will go on ahead. I'm like beginning the, the I, I'm, I'm starting to make the beginnings of a uh, money making machine here. Both of these are going to be generating money for me. They won't generate um, water or hops. I'll need to have other tiles to do that for me, but they will generate money um, so that I can keep my overall economy going. So I, again, I can put this in, I'm paying five. So I'm, you know, I'm, I've gone through 10 bucks now so far. Spanning 10, getting five and change. And where do I put this? Uh, I'll go on ahead and put it right there, let's say. Yeah, okay. So again, on the shady side, if, I, if it was over here, it would have cost 10. But hey, it can generate five hops. Five hops for me is one, two, three, four, five. That gets hops onto the board where they're actually worth scoring. And remember, once I get all of these onto the board, I could be completing that objective. But I got to pay five more bucks to do it. Uh, I, I, I'm just going to focus on money right now. I'll worry about actually getting resources later. So I'll put it right there. All right. And now, um, this particular uh, field needs, I only need to put one, two, three, four more things in um, to completely surround this. And then I'll get to build this, which means I'll then, once this is built, I'll get to harvest some of the stuff that's around it. So I'm building towards that. And because I've done that, I've now left several things for Jen if she wants to grab them. And I wouldn't mind if she does, because hey, then I can jump forward and get my next number five. And I could, and then the next number five. And Jen can see that. She's a little worried. Um, is she, although, you know, I'm bankrupting myself to grab all these big, high scoring uh, number five tiles. So is Jen going to do that? Is she just going to hire this monk? Is she going to jump here and try to harvest everything of a given number? Now, this is definitely something she's not going to do. Because if you come here, you pick a, a numerical value, a fertility value, it's called. All these different locations. This is a fertility value of four and one and two. This represents how much they generate. If Jen were to come here, she could pick the number two to activate all of her number two tiles, which means she would get exactly two lumber. That's not very good. Um, but since Jen, I, I think Jen's going to skip this monk for now. She's going to skip this. She's going to grab this too. So now she's getting two yeast and she can put it on the sunny or the shady. She'll go on ahead and put it on the sunny. 
Um, she'll put it right here. So that this, uh, this one can be activated by both of these sheds. This one can be activated by both of these sheds potentially. And now Jen's got two tiles with a value two, which means later on, now she, um, if she ever tries to activate stuff with a value of two, she's got two number two tiles. So she's kind of focusing on a particular level of fertility so that when she activates number two, she'll get the most benefit out of it. Looking ahead, she can see there's a number two over here and another number two over here. So if Jen, say, gets, she's got two twos, so she gets this and she gets this, then when she's got four tiles with value two, then it might make sense for her to activate the X because you notice she only gets to activate um, a fertility value once in the game. So if she had a whole bunch of twos and then activates this, she'd get, um, you know, eight, 10, 12 resources. And then this space, uh, the fertility activation can never happen again. So anyway, so Jen's starting to build a strategy. She's trying to save her cash. Remember, she gave herself some extra cash. She's trying to go as cheap as possible. Um, anyway, though, that's going to cost her four bucks, though. So here's 10. She gets six and change because she put it on the sunny side. All right, so that was Jen's turn. We both skipped over these. These will be available to us in the second of three rounds, but for now, we've skipped them both. And now it's my turn again. And Jen's letting me do it. So I'm going to, this is an opportunity to activate every monk of one type I've got. So if I had a whole bunch of these kind of, of, of these monks, I could come here, I could activate all of them, and they'd potentially harvest a bunch of stuff for me. I don't have any monks right now, so you better believe I'm skipping that and jumping right to here and getting another value five tile. I'm going to pay five more bucks, not ten, because I'm putting it on the shady side. And, uh... Let's see, if I put it here, yeah. So now when this thing gets finished, I'm going to make 15 bucks off of this. So all of these tiles will have paid for themselves once I activate this, or potentially. And I could potentially activate these several times. So I've spent 15, but I'm hoping to get more than 15 out of them as I start triggering them later in the game. There's several different ways you can trigger these tiles. The, one of the main ways is complete an area so that you build a shed and then trigger adjacent tiles. But another way to do it is to grab, um, like, like I was talking about, if I grab this X, I, right now, if, if, I could, if I could go backwards, I can't, but on the next round, if I were to grab this, I could say, hey, you know what, my one-time fertility activation, harvest, I'm going to activate all my fives. So all of these would activate, and I would get 15 bucks. They'd pay for themselves, and I'd get more opportunities to activate them later in the game. But for now, I just put that there, and I paid five more. So I've paid 15. I'm down to 10 bucks, and I'm halfway towards this uh, four-point goal. Yeah. So... Jen's turn. Let's see here. So, hmm, is she going to let me have all those fives unimpeded? I think not. I think now she's going to step in. She's, uh, right, she, neither of us have any monks, so neither of us want to activate this. So we both skipped it. Uh, Jen can't come here because there's nothing to do here. And so Jen's going to scupper my plans a little bit. Boom. She's going to take one of these sweet, sweet fives as well. Um, and... I'm like, no! Although I can still see there are more fives available. I'll get this. I'm still way ahead in the lead. So now, is Jen going to pay five or ten for this? She is uh, down to, she has 19 bucks still. I think she's going to pay big. She's going to pay ten. All right, there we go. And that was expensive. That really wiped her out financially. But now, when she gets these filled up and can activate this, she'll out. Also, um, at some point in the future, if Jen were to come to this space, she could say, hey, this means I can pick one type of good and harvest from all my tiles like that. So Jen could take this, put this here. It's a one-time deal. She'll never be able to, to um, activate all her lumber again, but she would generate seven lumber because she's set that up. Because remember, they're on the sunny side. If they were over here, they'd generate seven money. But instead, Jen is um, you know, making early investments. So Jen is now on the um, run for five as well. And she's left it for me. And I'm like, ah, okay, well, um, I could pick up this monk. I don't care. I'm just going to grab his five before Jen does. And now this is going to be interesting. I think I'm going to go a bit crazy. I'm going to put this five over. Um, oh. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to put this five over here, which means it's going to cost me 10. 
I am now completely bankrupt. All my starting capital is gone. And now that means when I eventually hit here and, and um, you know, pick which, you know, once I fill these two in and I build a building here and activate stuff, um, these can make me money. This can make me hops and give me one, two, three, four, five hops. I will actually have enough hops to start scoring points. I'll be one step closer to completing this objective where I want to get all my resources on the scoring track. So that is pretty nice. Although I'm broke, Jen's still sitting on nine Ducats. So what is she going to do? Is she going to hire this monk? Or um, is she going to jump? No. Hey, remember Jen likes those twos. She's going to come here and she's going to pay four to put another two on the shady side. Um, let's see here. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Right. Jen will put uh, this lumber here. And now there's a very important consideration to decide where she's putting. She cost her four. So the shed, when it comes here, could ultimately get a lot of lumber for her and start pushing over. Because remember, if she could get her lumber all the way up to 20, she'll trigger that particular bonus and she could start making money off of lumber. So Jen's really investing on uh, lumber. We'll see how well it pays off. The positioning of this is critical, but I'll get to that. Uh, it, it, that'll make sense once we get to the part where, we've, where Jen has finished these last two spaces and then she gets to harvest this whole little area. So we'll see how that works. It's really funky the way it works. Uh, so wait for that in a minute. But moving back to me, okay. I could now come here and you know it wouldn't be bad because I could say, hey, you know what? I could come here, grab this and harvest every hop space I've got, which would get me five hops and five gold. I'm broke, remember? So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to jump a little bit and be the first to grab a purple harvest disc. So I grab it, and this particular, this is a C, that means I can harvest um, all my opportunities to get yeast or hops or water or barley or lumber. And uh, the best use for it would be hops because I got two hop spaces. I'm coming here, and that means I activate every hops, I harvest from every hop style I've got. I make five bucks and five hops. Oh, and I've just uh, dropped, I put some little sticky on here so that they wouldn't, but of course, Thought it was going to be sneaky, but ah, the thumbtack didn't work. All right, so we're going to jump up five. One, two, three, four, five. I've got hops, and I've actually got wood now for the end of the game to actually make. I mean, none of these are going to produce. I, will, I Until I get all of these into the positive, I can't produce any ale at all. I need at least one of all of these things to make ale. I still have no yeast, no water, and no barley. But I did get five hops, and I also got five bucks. Because remember, I was broke. I'm not broke anymore. But because I have now covered the space, I can never um, activate hops directly again. I could still activate these via other means, by coming here and activating every five space I got, or by filling it up, or other ways as well. There are other things. But uh, for now, I just grab some hops and some cash. And I've taken this purple disc. It is now Jen's turn. Let's see. Now, if Jen were to come here, any number of players can come here. Uh, you can come here if you have completed one or more of the objectives. Coming here says, look, I've completed whatever. I've made it to 20 or I've built four different types of sheds. Uh, when you come here, you claim the barrels, the, the point barrels, for as many objectives as you have completed. Now, right now, Jen hasn't completed any objectives, so she's skipping that. Does she want to get even more lumber? That's a nice cheap. It's all a one. And remember, this is the first chance to get a one. The first player to get six level one tiles will benefit. So, um, you know, I didn't take it. Uh, Jen's going to grab it. That's going to cost her. If she puts it in the sunny side, it's going to cost her two. That's what she's going to do. She is now down to three bucks herself. But she snags this and puts it on the sunny side. She'll put it over here. All right, this thing is about to fire. She just needs to put one tile here, either another resource generating tile or a monk, her choice. We'll see what she does in a second. All right, so that was Jen's turn. My turn. Okay, well, I can't come here. I haven't completed any objectives yet. I can't come here because there's nothing here. Um, later in the game, it's possible that there might be multiple items, and Jen might have come here and only grabbed one, which means I could then come here and grab something else. But since there's nothing here, the first place I could go is here. Um, and now this is interesting. The first purple that we passed over was um, do an X. It's a one-time thing. Activate everything of a given fertility value. You can only ever do that once. The second one was activate all the monks of a given type. The third one, which you just saw me do, was activate all the um, resources of a given type. Now this, um, I, I could come here. This lets me choose the A, 
the B or the C. So I could come here and um, I could activate my monks or I could activate everything with level five. I don't have to wait till I get all the way over here to say, hey, I want to do the fertility and activate every level five. I could jump here right now, declare that this is an A token, um, which means do the fertility thing, and boom, I would make 15 bucks and five more hops. That's not bad. I'd have almost as much money as I started with. Um, and I would have built a lot of stuff and I would have gotten hops. So I could do that, but I don't have to because if I look a little bit further down the road, hey, there's another ABC and another ABC. So do I do that to make some more cash? <gasps> look at this, there's another five. Oh, Jen didn't take the five. All right, I could do this, but, which would let me then you know, harvest what I've got, but I don't want to activate fives when I can pick up another five. So I'm going to skip this now. Because if I go here, Jen might grab this and take... She's already taken one fiver for me. I, and I see she loves lumber. She's getting a lot of lumber. I'm willing to bet she's going to grab that if I don't grab it. So I'm going to make a big jump and come over here and grab this. All right. So this is going to cost me either five or ten, depending on whether I put it on the sunny or the shady side. And now here's the funky... Here's the funky doodle. If I only pay five, which is all I've got because I just made some cash, I can't put it around this. I could say put it around this so that I could start building up to activate this space as well. So that'd be interesting. But if I pay 10, I could put it on the sunny side and that would give me five actual lumber. Because remember, by the end of the game, not only do I need money, I need to get all these things up higher and higher and higher. So here's the thing. I think I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it on the sunny side. How can I do that? To put it on this and I'll put it right here. All right. Now that costs me 10. How can I do that? Because I only have five. I'm going to pay the five, and, well, folks, I haven't revealed everything. As part of setup, in addition to starting with our resources and our master brewer, and we started with 25 bucks, we also start with these five privilege cards. Everybody has the exact same five privilege cards. Now, these are cards that you can use once in the game to get a privilege. Like this one is, move my master brewer up five spaces. Because remember, we've got to get our master brewer all the way up at least this far. Well, actually, that's not true. The master brewer can just be really terrible and stay down in the doldrums. All the resources have to get up onto the track. If the master brewer gets up onto the track, it makes the resources better because the better he is, the better ale, i.e. the more points we'll get at the end of the game depending on how many resources we've got. So this is a really cool privilege to use it to move your... So I don't think... Right. So I'm going to, because here's the thing, at any time I want, I can jettison one, two, three, or all five of these. Just remove them from the game to get three coins. So I, I need five more bucks. I'm going to have to throw away two of these privileges, which will give me six bucks, five of which will go towards that tile I just bought. So what am I giving up? I don't want to give up the Master Brewer because this is my main way of getting the Brewer higher. So let's not worry about that. This is just a quick 12. This is another way to make money. I think I want to hold on to that. This one is pick one of the resource types, and for every tile I've got of that, move that resource forward once. So this is a really great privilege if you've gotten a lot of really low-value tiles. Um, you know, Jen, she's got a lot of twos, so if she picks her lumber, Jen's got four lumber tiles, this would increase her lumber by four. I haven't, I've got a lot of high values. This is not as good for me. I think I'm going to jettison this. It's out of the game. I can never use this privilege, but I just made three gold which goes directly towards the tile I just bought. And now I got to get rid of one more. This means for every objective I complete, and I was talking before how they are worth four for first place and two for second place. This makes them worth five and three. So if I'm planning on completing a lot of objectives before the game is over, this is a nice one to have. And this privilege is, um, basically, when I activate this privilege, I count the number of purple harvest tokens I've taken. Remember, I've taken one so far. If I wait until late in the game and use this one, say I've taken like four or five purple tokens, it lets me pick um, my last place resource and move it forward that many times. So if I'm planning on getting a lot of purple, and you always do, I think this is important because usually, I mean, every time you do a purple, that's a harvest. You need to harvest to be able to make beer in this game. So I'm going to hold on to this one, which means I'm jettisoning this, which means all the barrels I get are worth one less point than they could have been if I had activated this. But I'm dumping this to get the other three, which I spend, which means after I dump those, I have one left, but I have now put, this is going to be an amazing... 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. This is going to be an amazing shack when I build it. All I got to do is fill in one more space. Although the problem is I only have $1. So that's not great. All right. But anyway, so that was my turn. Okay. 
Um, Jen, she's down to three bucks. But remember, Jen's got those same five privilege cards, and anytime she wants, she could jettison them to make a little bit more cash as well. But then you're throwing away really great privileges. So where is Jen going? Now she could come here. So if she comes here, she can pick an A, B, or C. I think at this point, she would pick the, hey, I want to activate my lumber, so she'd get a whole bunch of lumber. But man, she'd rather get another lumber tile before she would do that. But she's broke unless she starts trading in privileges. Hmm. Let's see here. Um, she could also come here to say, hey, I want to activate all my twos. But again, Jen's, since Jen hasn't built in the shady side at all, she's not going to get any cash. Yeah. Let's see here. What is Jen going to do? What is Jen going to do? I think Jen is going to, Jen's going to trade, just the way you saw me do it, Jen's going to trade in some privileges as well. She's skipping this harvest. She's skipping this. Oh, but if she grabbed this monk, she could use him to fill the last space in. Yeah, that's what Jen's going to do. Jen is the first player to get a monk. And the nice thing is, the first monk that was available to us costs four or eight, depending on sunny or shady. The second one costs three. The longer you wait to get monks, the cheaper they get. This guy only costs two or four. Jen has three bucks left. She's going to get this monk, who, and going to put him in the sunny side, so he costs four. So that means Jen is now broke, and in fact, she needs one more buck to get him, so she is going to dump one of her privileges as well. And she wants to keep the money one. She wants, she will dump, so this one's really good because she's got a lot of a given type and she's trying, she's going for trying to get her lumber up to 20 as fast as possible. So that can make her money and score her that completion bonus. So she's keeping this because this will help her get to her lumber. The same as me, if she doesn't plan on getting a lot of objectives, this is an, yeah, Jen's going to dump that one as well. So Jen dumped that to get three more, which she only needed two, one of, and so she has two change, and Jen has just gotten this monk. And now Jen could put the monk anywhere. Since she paid, she could put it in the sunny side. Um, if she'd only paid two, she could have started working over here, but Jen's going to slap him down right there. And now, whenever a player completely surrounds one of these pastures, the game pauses for a second, and players build a shed. And building a shed means they can activate some of the tiles. Now, the quality of the shed is based on the total fertility value of all the tiles that surround it. So, the, um, now, the monks don't provide fertility value. They're monks, after all. So, um, Jen gets 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. The total fertility value of this shed is 12, which means Jen has made it um, from 0 to 7, she gets this space. 8 to 11, this. 12 to 17, so she just crossed into this threshold. She gets to build this type of shed. And and her master brewer increases by one. And once again, my stickum didn't work. It stuck to the board instead of the piece like it was supposed to. All right, so Jen has just increased the quality of her master brewer. Not high enough to get out of the 5 to 1 2x, which is the worst brewer in the world. But if Jen can get him up here, he goes 4 to 1 3x, 3 to 1 3x, um, all the way up to 1 to 1 6x. Now, that doesn't mean anything to you right now, but I'll talk about that when I start talking about how the end game works. But suffice to say that if you can get your brewer into these higher thresholds, there's this one threshold, then the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, uh, and the eighth. So if you can get a level eight master brewer, forget about it. I mean, that would be amazing. So Jen has started to work up because she's here. That meant her brewer moved forward one, and she gets one of these tiles that lets her pick two of these to activate. So um, if she'd made it to the 18 to 23, she could activate three of the tiles. If she'd made it to 24 plus on fertility, she could activate four of these tiles. If, she, if this was a very low fertility, she wouldn't be able to activate any of them. So Jen takes one of these level two uh, ones like this, and wherever she puts it, you can see how um, it is. It, she puts it to activate two tiles opposite each other. So she goes like this. She'll activate this and this and get four lumber. That's not very good. Remember how I was talking about earlier? It's really critical to think about how you're laying this stuff out. That's what Jen was thinking. She put her most valuable thing here, and she put her monk here because she knew this was going to be a level two so that she could go like this and activate these two tokens. So by activating these two tokens, she gets five lumber because it's sunny side. And again, man, you're really failing me. Um, stick them. 
Apparently, Stickum likes to stick to cardboard more than lumber. So anyway, so she just made one, two, three, four, five lumber. And now, she activated that, she activates the monk. Now what happens is when you would activate a monk, the monk activates everything he's next to. So, the monk says, hey, I'm going to get two more lumber. So Jen has actually made it up to seven lumber now. She's well on her way to 20. And this monk is also going to activate this yeast field. So the yeast, come on. Yay, the yeast goes up too. So if the yeast moves up only one more, it's into a scoring category. Um, so uh, the, uh, the monk did very well. Jen activated these two. And now um, she is never going to be able to build another shed there. But if she builds a shed here, this, uh, you know, if she builds a shed here, she could activate that monk again um, and activate both of these tiles again. Plus, if Jen puts something here, this monk, uh, or something here and here, this monk could trigger one, two, three, four tiles worth of stuff and give her a ton of resources. But the problem is, all of this is predicated on her having enough money to continue building in the sunny side. Jen has given herself no way of making money. That's a real problem, but she's got plans for that. She's still got two bucks. She's got more privileges she can trade in if she needs to. Um, so, don't worry about her because the main thing is she does have this privilege in her future and she thinks she knows how she's going to get that. Okay. So that was Jen's turn. She picked up a monk and she built a shed, triggered some stuff, got a bunch of lumber. She's a, a quarter of the way to her ultimate goal. She also got some yeast. Very effective turn. And now it is my turn again. And hey, you know what? I'm only one away as well. If I put something in this space, I could also build a shed. And as you can see, this is going to be a super shed. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. It's going to be more than 20. I'm going to get to activate four of my tiles. Although, my problem is, I only have one buck. Arr! All right. I've grabbed all the fives. There are no more fives to grab. So I think I'm going to come over here. And I am going to do a, another harvest. And it could be, since it's this, it could be an A or B or a C. Um, now, unfortunately, it can't be an A because remember, the A is the number. I can't do this again. I've done my one fertility um, harvest. But what I could do is I could say, hey, let's go on ahead and trigger hops. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to say let's trigger hops. And that means I get to activate all these. I make five more bucks and five hops. So I've gone up to six hops now. And I made five more. And so now I've got some cash again to buy something to fill this last space in. And I can never um, do this harvest again. The only way I'm going to be able to activate these hops now is by filling this or, say, putting a, uh, if, you know, if I put a monk here, that monk could activate both of these and make me 10 bucks when I eventually trigger that monk, as an example. So my next stop might be to grab a monk, the cheapest one in the game, put him right here so that on the next go around, I activate him and get 10 bucks. So that's what I did. Um, but I have filled this space in. Now, the one thing I haven't talked about so far is you may have noticed, if you look really closely, these um, uh, harvest activation spaces are divided into two. Right now, I just activated two hops. If I had instead activated my one lumber to just make five lumber but no money, I would have filled this little area in. Whenever you fill one of these doubles in, that's when you get to pick one of your privileges and play it. So, if um, I got five bucks and five hops, but instead, uh, to activate my hops, instead, if I had activated lumber, it's only five lumber, that's not that great. But because I filled this in, I've done both of them, I now get the privilege, I could have 12 bucks. So I made five bucks and five hops, but instead, I could have made five lumber and 12 bucks. So that'd be pretty cool. But I don't think I'm going to. I'm keeping this down here. So now, because I've done this, I want to start getting some yeast so that I can activate yeast, so that I can do both of these, so that I can play a privilege in this space. I've got two different places I can play one of my three remaining privileges. Because remember, I burned two of my five privilege cards. But if I do yeast and if I do lumber, I can play two of them to make some money and, and other things. All right. So that was that. I just made five bucks. So I'm up to six. And now I can afford... Although, you know what? Yeah, I can afford that last guy. But here's my problem. Jen might see that, and she might jump all the way over here and grab him. And I'd be, no! But Jen's not going to do that. Remember, Jen loves the number two. Jen is coming over here and getting another double. And where is she going to put this? Because she want, the more two she has, when she eventually uh, triggers a level two fertility, they'll all trigger. So that'll be amazing. So Jen just got this. I think she's going to put this. She only has two bucks. She's going to spend her last two bucks and put this on the shady side. 
So Jen will go on ahead, oops, and put it, where will she put it? I mean, she, uh, she'll put it here, let's say. Hmm. Because then, I mean, she's starting to try and fill this thing in, which will give her more lumber, will give her some money. And if she fills, I mean, if she puts some other things, she can make a lot of money off this. And this thing, yeah, because, the, okay, so she'll put it there, let's say. Although, she needs to be thinking about, is she going to trigger an 8 to 11? That means she can only activate one tile. If she can get up to another 12 by 17, she could activate two like she did before, which means, hey, she can get two money and two, but that's not really exciting. She'll put it over here. Um, and then ultimately, she's hoping to put a high value thing here and a high value thing here so that she'll activate both of those high value things, let's say as an example. She could put a monk here, which means this monk would make money and lumber. And when a monk activates another monk, it doesn't create a chain reaction of monks. This monk, instead of activating the things he's next to, every monk that's activated by a monk increases your master brewer by one. So Jen just bought this. Now she's got one, two, three, four. That's going to make it much more attractive for her to do a fertility harvest with the number two. Okay, so that was Jen's turn. And I'm like, yes, she left him. I'm going to jump past all of this stuff and get that super cheap monk. He's going to cost me two bucks because I want to put him on the sunny side. So uh, let's get three. If it goes five, here's three and change because I got the cheapest monk this, uh, this year. And folks, it's my big moment. Boom! So remember, this is the best it could be. It's 24 plus. I get a level four shed. And now you'll notice the level four shed, it says, hey, activate anything you want in any direction. Placement does not matter. But I still only get to pick four things that I'm activating. So what am I going to activate? Well, I'm definitely going to activate him because he'll activate both of these. So let's start out. Um, I get to activate four things. I'll activate the monk, which gets me five bucks and five hops. So there's, uh, and now I got to move my hops up. One, two, three, four, five. And now I've got three more of these things to activate. Heck, I mean, I could activate hops and hops again, which would get me almost all the way to the tops on hops. Ooh. But remember, I can't make any ale at the end of this game for final scoring unless I get all my goods out of the doldrums because I don't have any right now. I got to get them up. Although there's other ways to do that as well. As part of in game scoring, it's really kind of funky how it works. I'll talk about that in a second. So, do I activate both of these for two and three and get this thing up ten more to where I've almost crossed that line? And then I could say, get five barley, which is my lowest. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go crazy. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. I did it! One, two, three, four, and I can't go another. So, um, for every space I can't go, I make a buck. Five. I just made a buck. And now, I have actually... Did I do that right? Yeah, because I'd activated these already, and then I activated it with the monk. Oh, wait. Oh, the monk, by the way. Oh, yeah, he gave me the five. Oh, hold on a second. No, this doesn't give me five hops. This gives me five bucks. I'm not there. One, two, three, four, five. Instead, it gives me five bucks because it's on the shady side. That's fine. So, right, so I activated him, which gave me two things. And then I activated this. And then I activated this. And you know what? I just think I want some more cash going into the second round. So I'll go ahead and activate this. Not to get five water, but to get five more. So, yeah, that was huge. I've got 17, no, I've got, yeah, 17 bucks. I've got a bunch of resources. I'm almost to a completed objective. Um, and when I do my five fertility, all of these will trigger. That's going to be amazeballs. Okay. Although for me to be able to pull that off, I threw away almost half of my privileges. But that was very effective. It is now Jen's turn again. She is coasting on fumes. She doesn't have much more. Um, so, I mean, she'd have to trash another privilege to get any of these things. Although she could come here and harvest. I think she is. Jen's going to come here and harvest. She picks the A, B, or C. I think Jen's got enough twos. She's going to choose this as an A and harvest all of her um, twos, which gives her two bucks, because that's in the shady side, um, to four lumber, one, two, three, four lumber, and two yeast. So yeast is on the way. One, two, yeast, and one, two, three, four lumber. Cool. So, um, and two bucks. Yeah, so Jen just went there and act now. She can never do a fertility action again. So twos are no longer that exciting for her. Um, but still, not too shabby. And um, right, so that was her turn. 
And now, the next time, if Jen activates here and harvests all her lumber, she'll get a bunch of lumber, which will probably put her over the top, and she'll get to do a privilege, which will make her some money or whatever she might want to do. So Jen's very close to doing that. But now it's my turn again. I could come here now, and, um, but I haven't completed any objectives yet. When you come here, you complete all your objectives. You, you grab all the objectives you completed. I haven't. Do I want to come here and grab that? Hey, you know what? Remember, there is an objective. We're getting six number ones. So I'm going to come here. I've got a bunch of cash. I think I'm going to spend two bucks and put those hops on the sunny side because I want to get my hops all the way up to 20. So where am I going to put this? I paid two. I'll put it on the sunny side. I'll just put it. I don't want to put it next to my, I want to put another valuable thing here instead of this monk only triggering a one. So I'll put it over there let's say. So I'm starting to complete, or, or I could put it up here so that this now has three things around it. Yeah, so that I'm, you know, so that I'm, I'm getting closer to being able to finish this, let's say. Let's, let's go with that. Or I could put it down here. Yeah, that makes more sense. I still need to put something valuable here so the monk will trigger that and that, and then I get two more things, and I'll get another nice payout from that. So I did that, and now it's Jen's turn. Um, she can't come here. She has no objectives. She can't come here. So Jen is the first to finish the round. The first player here gets to pick what they want. They can pick to be first in the second round. They can pick to increase their master brewer by one, to increase any one of their resources by two, or to get two more bucks. Jen just wants more cash. So Jen got there first. She's grabbing the cash. And now, if I were way back here, I could now slowly move forward and activate things over and over and over again because Jen's out of the round. Um, but I'm out. There's nothing more for me to do anyway. So now I've got to cross. The last player to um, finish a round must take the first player. Unless it's already taken. If Jen took first player, then I could take anything I want. But since Jen didn't, I must take first player. I cannot get two resources or this. We have finished the first of three rounds, folks. Now we got to set up for round two, which means, hey, more monks come out. There are now two monks in this space. And uh, where's the next monk? Uh, you can see two monks over here and one monk and one monk. So the cheap monks are by themselves. If you had eight bucks, you could come uh, here and grab both monks and put them both in the shady side. Or if you had 16, you could put both of them in the sunny side. So the new monks come out. We also have to refill all the resources. We got a whole bunch. We're still in the level ones. We don't start putting twos out until we use all the ones. So I just start filling them up with ones. Bippity boppity although it's so far to reach. And so all these singles come out, which, uh, because, you know, Jen and I did a pretty good job of getting a lot of resources, but as we keep going and more and more things come out, hey, this now has two things. Oh my gosh, two fours. So if somebody comes here with eight bucks, they could grab both of these. Or if somebody comes here and pays and only grabs one, then somebody else could land here and grab the other one. All right, so we need more. And, uh, whoops, did I skip this? No, I don't think I did. Uh, more and more and more. Okay, so that's that. Oh, and um, new purples. For any purples that didn't get taken, the purple options refill. These ones didn't get taken, so but they don't pile up. Uh, there's still just one example. And now we can start the second round. I am the first player, and you get the idea. Hey, there's another five. I've got five fives. If I grab this and I've got the money to do it, that's it. I have gotten, I have completed this objective. I have installed six level fives into my world and I think I'm gonna pay 10 and I'm gonna put it right here, right next to Mr. Jolly Guy. So when he activates, he's gonna make me five bucks, five hops and five yeast. And I'm that much closer to completing this so I could activate a bunch of stuff again. So that cost me 10. So all that money I made, it's almost all gone. Oh no, but I've now got six fives. So I have a reason to land on this space or this space because I'll be able to claim this, which is worth four points as the first player to, did it, to do it. It's my turn. Now it's Jen's turn. She's got four bucks to her name. It might be time for her to make that jump and trigger. Oh wait, no, no, she already did fertility. She wants to trigger all her lumber, but that she does not want to jump all the way over here so that she could trigger lumber and get a bunch and leave all this to me. So I think, Jen, she's got to have another plan. Um, but the thing is, when she does do the lumber, that means she will 
be the first, she'll put that here, she'll be the first to do one of her privileges, which would give her 12 bucks that could keep her going until she does a harvest. Because Jen needs to start, I mean, Jen completely ignored the shady side. This is proving difficult for her. She's low on cash, um, but she's doing well on resources. If she can get this the rest of the way around, though, she can start making cash simply by harvesting lumber and turning her excess lumber, once she gets to 20, into cash. So that's an option for her uh, if she wants to. But you know what, folks? I think I'm going to stop right there because that should give you a pretty good idea of the flow of the game. We're going to do another round, things refill. And on the last round, in a two-player game, um, every one of the harvest spaces gets two. This only is in a two-player game. So in the final round, each player has lots of opportunities to do their final harvest, plus everything fills up again. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about is how the game works at the end. Let's just say I continued on, and I ultimately did get my hops up here. And, um, you know, I, I got... I got five lumber, let's say, because I activated this once. Um, and I got, you know, I mean, I, you know, because I definitely have some hops, and I didn't get very many hops, and um, I didn't get any water. I almost crossed the line on water, but I didn't quite make it. And let's say at some point I did make a really big push on barley, and I got barley somehow because of something. Let's say this is how we end up. And let's say my master brewer, because I focused on all these, my master brewer, I tried, I tried to get him, but I didn't quite get him into the next threshold. So that means at the end of the game, I have a five to one translation and every ale I make is worth two points. If I could have just gotten him a few more up, every ale he makes would have been worth three points at the end scoring. But let's say I didn't quite make it. Um, right. So, and let's say I didn't knock everything around like a doofus. So now here's the way it works. You have to, um, just, you, I have to sell all my high level stuff to bring up my low level stuff. And because I'm in this first level, I have to sell five to one. So I can, I must, I, I basically I have to consolidate everything. So what I do is I would sell five of my hops, one, two, three, four, five, to increase my lowest level by one. Then I would sell five again. One, two, three, four, five, to increase my lowest level by one. Then I would do it again. One, two, three, four, five, to increase one of my lowest levels by one. And let's see, can I do this? One, two, three, four, five, to increase my last lowest level by one. And now, I cannot sell any more of these. I, I have to stop selling stuff to increase my low level stuff. I sell all my high value things um, at five to one because of my terrible return to bring up my low things. So that means at the end of the game, I, have, I can make three ales because my lowest, I've got three yeast, three water, three barley. It doesn't matter that I've got five lumber and five hops, I can only make three ale. So um, I make three ale, but they're terrible ale. So it's three ale times two means I make six bucks. If I could have gotten this up here, just even up here, then I would have been trading them in four to one. Maybe I would have actually been able to make a fourth ale, but more importantly, each ale I make would be worth three. So I'd make nine points off my ale instead of six. So this is not a super high scoring game, but that's how it works. Your high, your, the stuff you have a lot of, you sell it at the end to bring your low ups up so you can make as much ale as you can at the best quality you can to make points off of that. Plus, of course, you get points off of the objectives you have completed and your leftover money. Say I, oh, let's say I had 11 leftover bucks. I had 10 of it, it's 10 to one to increase one thing if I had 30 bucks left over, I could have brought that up, that up, that up, and I would have made four ales instead of three. Because, um, right. So that would be how the game ends. It's a very interesting, very thematic thing. All the stuff you have a lot of, you sell to get all the stuff you need so you can make as much ale as possible to the quality of your brewmaster. And that, folks, is what Heaven and Ale is all about. And if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that eye in the top right corner of the screen or follow the show notes in five, four, three, two, one.